So I, I actually wanted to start with Wenda, uh, who've been doing this for a long time. You've been pounding your fist for a long time, saying we need a revolution. We, you've, you've sold a lot of banners at Yahoo. You grew a lot of revenue. But you've also been saying that this fundamentally still isn't where we need to go. Uh, what, what, I guess my, my first sort of thought, my first question for you on this one is, what are the consequences if we don't make these changes? So we're launching something, we're encouraging others, but what if once again we don't make any strides in this industry? What happens? Well, I think, to me, we're, we're absolutely going to lose the consumer. And I think, you know, for you know, anyone who's in marketing, anyone who's in advertising, anyone who produces content, if the consumer is not front and center in the conversation, front and center on the table, uh, eventually the consumer makes all the decisions, and that's absolutely the case um, in this business. And I think that you know, we've concentrated for so long on perfecting the, uh, the targeting, perfecting technology. The reality is that the best media plan in the world with the most sophisticated targeting really doesn't mean that much unless we produce commercial messaging that compels the reader, user, to feel something and eventually to do something. So I, I think our very core uh, user base is at risk. So you think that we will actually send people away from the web into other channels? Well, I think that, you know, of course, with the, the emergence now of um, iPads and e-books and, yeah. and a lot of the uh, mobile devices, um, they do have the attraction of, um, I, I think, being more pleasing to creative directors in terms of the opportunity there. Um, so I think while the, the consumer revolution will go on, um, the web need not be left behind. So, so I have a question for Barry on this, is that you, you work with, closely with um, technologists and engineers as much as you're also working with marketers and the creative side. What is, what is it that's kept CMOs and the marketers for, for demanding this for so long? Why, is it, why, is it, uh, why, aren't, why aren't the CMOs demanding that the, the formats change versus trying to wedge messages uh, into what exists today? Mm -hmm. I think if we had relied on CMOs to sort of lead the digital revolution, we'd be in really bad, <laughs> deeper trouble. Um, I mean, quite honestly, the marketing departments of most client organizations haven't really caught up with the way that their consumers have changed dramatically in the last decade. And it's been hard for them to keep up They've organized themselves around sort of an older paradigm that was more about mass media. And when this world changed, at the pace in which it changed, where things entered the market and then over the night, overnight became mass adopted, it was almost impossible for CMOs or marketing departments to keep up. And it really kind of fell on, on agencies and media companies to lead it. And quite frankly, I don't think we've done a great job either. Um, I think agencies have had to figure out a lot of interesting sort of workaround solutions for uh, the endemic problem that there haven't been great advertising formats digitally. And so on the one hand, it's led us down a path of creating things that consumers sought out on their own rather than finding it because they were on some media property reading about something they're interested in. But I think we lost that opportunity where this audience was aggregating on media properties to actually engage them. And instead, we settled for this thing that I think by IAB's own numbers, uh, the average banner ad gets 0.1 or 0.2% click-through rate. And we've settled for that for over a decade now. That was ludicrous. Is it wrong to give up on the banners as we know them today? Is there, is there more creativity? that we sh Should we spend more time focusing on trying to put creative inside the banner or really force new formats and, 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 and change it all together? I think we've got to do both. I mean, uh, the constraints, you know, there's no box so small that it eliminates the possibility for a creative solution. Just look what the nanotechnologists are doing. But what we, um, what, what we need are canvases that inspire the creators. I want to join into what you said, and not only are we losing the consumers, but we could be losing the, the creative people. We could say, you know, it's, it was breathtaking to see how fast banner ads became the junk product of so many agencies. You did it the night before the thing was due, and. Um, to Barry's point, 10 years ago, you, you kind of dragged your client into it. Then the client started getting kind of interested in it. Then they got interested in the analytics. And now they're looking at those click-through rates and saying, is that all there is? Is that all I can expect? And so I think if we can um, get the creative people more ex excited and inspired by what can be done, 
I think a lot of what you're doing for devil, with devil is a great start at providing that canvas. Um, I suspect you and Tim and your, people are just getting started with this, but I think that um, I think it could be inspiring to all of us. I think um, we've lost the distinction, and maybe it's a good thing between content and, um, that is non-commercial and content that is. Um, uh, we want to protect the kind of, um, uh, I'm going to disagree a little bit with the previous panelists because I think we want to protect what is sacred about the best journalism. And, and um, it's not that we can expect advertisers to be the sole sponsors of that anymore because that model isn't working for the advertisers. But, um, uh, but, the, uh, but what advertising has to do is instead of being an interruption in what you're doing, it has to have an invitation and it has to be a service. The service can be entertainment, it can be giving you information you want, it can be um, uh, pr uh, how to do something. I mean, it could be all kinds of things, but the best advertising today is going to be a service. And I think your devil's kind of site and a format allows that. What do we see ourselves talking about a year from now? Start with Barry. Wow. I mean, what, what will have happened? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the things that we're looking at um, as an agency uh, is mobile. Mobile is really the thing that I think is taking over um, our business. And it's again, it's another place where people have not figured out what the right advertising model is. It's just like the web was when it, 15 years ago. We'll probably get it wrong before we get it right. Um, good chance of that, just looking at what's happened uh, in the conversation today. But that's the place where we're focused uh, as an agency to try to figure out what that means for our clients. I hope we'll be talking about celebrating great brand advertising. Uh, there are a lot of us who've been at this for a very long time um, who always felt that boxing us in as direct marketing only um, and response oriented only um, was not going to be our future. We are an and medium and there's lots of room for brand advertising. We know the dollars are there so a year from now I hope we're going to be talking about Great brand advertising. So in we will, the we will space. Have officially buried the uh, the disconnect slide. I hope we do. <laughs> Mike, I'm old enough that I've been speaking at these things a long time, and so um, I'm pretty sure I know what I'll say. I'll say the work isn't good enough yet, and um, and I'll say, um, damn, I have to get back to work and do something about that. And so I think that's what we'll all be saying. Damn, we got to get back to work and make it even better. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful time for some companies to become the role models and show us what to do here. Great. And with that, I guess it's time to get back to work. Thank you all for uh, taking the time. And uh, thanks to the panelists.